Bethesda Game Studios are known for their massive open worlds that over the years have been filled with so many unique and mostly very dangerous creatures. There should be an absolute boatload of creatures in Starfield, and in this video, I'm going to go over everything we have been shown by BGS so far to see what types of creatures we could find. It seems as though within Starfield's thousand celestial objects, there will be plenty of these planets within the Goldilocks zone that could hold liquid water and life as we know it. In other words, these planets could be close enough to their own sun where water that could be present on them isn't frozen, but just far enough where the water on these planets does not boil away into gas either. So in order for liquid water to be present on these planets, they could not be too hot nor too cold. Their climates have to be just right, like little Goldilocks, the world's most famous burglar and her stolen porridge. This temperate climate allows our own Earth and others like it within the star field to hold life as we know it. With that being said, I'd be really interested to see if they dip into some type of alien biology that is fundamentally slash chemically different than our own. Do they dip into life without water? Some scientists theorize that life can be sustained through what they call supercritical fluids, such as pressurized CO2. Either way, we are in for some crazy creatures. Now, what type of life will be on these planets? Well, from what we've seen in rages all the way from giant majestic alien dinosaurs roaming around like meteors don't exist, to relatively small alien horseshoe crabs scuttling about. Also, I'm going to refrain from prefacing every creature with the word alien because technically they're mostly all alien as far as I can tell. So let's get into it and go over each animal we have been shown. So we'll start with the creatures we have seen on the planet Crete. As we arrive on Crete, we are welcomed by our first little creature that I just mentioned. It reminds me of a horseshoe crab and does not seem to mind us at all. Next, we see a Starfield equivalent of Mirelurks. They do not seem to be immediately hostile to the player either, but I'm sure someone will die here trying to fight them. Maybe even me. <laughs> this last one here on Crete fascinates me the most and is one of the main reasons I made this video. In the gameplay trailer, we see the player character fight through a pirate-infested United Colonies biolab slash research base. Near the top of the building, above our first ever look at the new Digipix system, is a very interesting poster. This poster's heading reads, Experimental Analysis of Selected Clone Cells. Below the heading, we see what looks like to be a four-stage growth process for this particular creature. The United Colony scientists had selected certain heterogeneous cells to clone, and through some form of mitosis, these cells create a growth finally leading to the world's scariest looking test tube baby. This biohazard gone wrong reminds me of the demigorgon dogs from Stranger Things. I'm sure we will meet this beast somewhere within this laboratory, maybe even after it rips open a couple pirates making an initial escape from the player. That would put us on the edge of our seats while exploring the rest of the lab. What these pirates could want with such a creature or this outpost, I'll leave for a future video. But this creature is definitely an awesome sign from the developers, and it shows me they're putting an absolute ton of thought into these creatures, their design, and most impressively, their chemistry slash biology. Next, we'll take a look at what I'll call the dinosaurs of Starfield, for lack of a better term for such large and exotic creatures. This trihorned animal in particular is absolutely beautiful. The fact that it has striped slash camouflaged armor plating signals to me that there is something on this lush planet that hunts these things. What could that possibly be? Also, its stance here reminds me of the mammoths in Skyrim, in the way that they would warn you if you got too close before charging. Next, we have a creature with what looks like to be the jaws of life attached to its face. I cannot imagine our spacesuits would survive a bite from this guy. I can't really tell if this creature has eyes. Maybe it senses vibrations and can only tell where you are if you are moving but I do not see any hairs or antennae that could back that theory up. If we look really closely at the shot towards the end of the gameplay reveal, it almost looks like we see the trihorn and jaws in the same temperate biome. Maybe the first shot of the trihorn was near the lush equator, the first shot of jaws was closer to the barren poles, and this is somewhere in between. We also get a quick shot at what reminds me of a Brachiosaurus, an ancient herbivore that used to roam the earth. This next dino is something straight out of a Dr. Seuss book with its strange looking orifices. If you look closer, there's one of these animals already sleeping there in the shade as this one is just getting comfortable. Next, we get three short clips 
The first of those creatures is the level 12 Siren on the planet Alpha Andraste 2. This creature looks to be completely blind using echolocation, meaning it uses loud noises and its giant bat-like ears to find its prey. One interesting thing to note here is that we are seeing a diseased variant of a creature for the first time in Starfield. I imagine that it works almost like fighting vampires in Skyrim and Oblivion, where the more you come into contact with them, the higher likelihood you contract their disease. Next is the level 15 Metropus Floater from the planet Lantana 3. These remind me of the floaters in Fallout 76. They most likely have a ranged attack comparable to a bloatfly, or maybe you just can't let their tentacles slash jellyfish-like oral arms touch you. We see a diseased variant of a floater here as well. Lastly, out of those three, we see the level 14 Angler Hexapod. The name here says it all for me. Angler, meaning it uses that appendage attached to its head to lure victims in. Hex, meaning six, and pod, meaning feet. So it is a six-footed creature who likes to fish for its prey. I imagine this thing burying itself in the sand or behind rocks, basically hiding in a place where only its lore can be seen until an unsuspecting victim comes closer to inspect. And to wrap it up here, we'll mention some creatures we will see at two of our confirmed major cities and some pets that we might be able to own and have aboard our ships. The first is the Ashta that are said to roam outside the walls of Aquila. They are mixed between a wolf and a velociraptor. I imagine that means they are a raptor-like animal that hunts in packs. I'm not sure if we have seen them yet, but I have a feeling that this statue might be a representation of the Ashta. Next, I'm sure there will be plenty of fish in and around Neon. We see a good amount being sold in the wet markets concept art. I'm wondering how large sea life will get in this game. Will we be able to hunt a whale-sized creature on the boats below Neon? Is there a giant creature that attacks the Aurora fishermen? Who knows? And lastly, we have pets. We have only seen a cat walking around our hab in the concept art, but I assume we could have a dog as well. Either way, I had a ton of fun looking through all of the creatures we have seen so far and giving my opinions. I would absolutely love to hear what you guys think about all this in the comment section below. If you guys found this informative and or enjoyable, please consider subscribing and throwing a like. It helps me out an absolute ton. And of course, we'll have more Starfield content coming at you guys soon. As always, I truly cannot thank you guys enough for all the support I've gotten since we've started our channel here. I appreciate all of you and cannot wait to see you guys next time. Later.